There we go. Stats up. Stats up. In the green. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Phil Gallagher. I run Fraven University. Today, I am going to be streaming with uh, Red Prison. I started a second league at the tail end of my last stream, and I just didn't quite get a chance to finish that off. Uh, so I'll probably finish that league and then play one more this morning. I think that's my game plan. Um, so for anyone unfamiliar with Red Prison, essentially the, the gist of it is that it is a deck full of lock pieces that you are trying to accelerate out quickly. So Blood Moon, Magus of the Moon, and Trinisphere are the three primary lock pieces along with Chalice of the Void. Uh, with the Soul Lands, the Chrome Moxen, and the Spirit Guides, you're hoping to play one of these on turn one to greatly hinder your opponent's ability to go and do anything. Uh, once you've kind of like locked up some things, then you go ahead and start winning the game, usually with Planeswalkers, uh, Karn and Chandra. Although, really, anything can go and lock up the game once you're, uh, you're moving in that direction. Uh, I've, since I've played this deck so many times before, I'm just going to kind of jump into things and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I, I know, Bill. I'm very excited for Bright Lane. Like, it's it's right around the corner, and, like, boy, do I need to test with it. It's it's the 5th, right? I think it's the 5th. Yeah, so next Thursday. Uh, really looking forward to playing some games with Bright Lane. So we got known three ninety eight. I don't know. I'm on the play. I get a turn one Trinisphere. That's good enough for me. Let's ignore the fact that I can't make a second red mana. Let's let's just ignore that part. Trinisphere is really good on the play. And then any red source or a Karn or a red land uh, just means I go ham. This is the mirror. This is not great for me. I will just deploy this. Yeah, this is not bueno. Uh, playing that bridge here doesn't really do much, and will probably just cost me my land. Alright, is there a world where if I play this bridge here, I do get Hellbent? If my next draw is Chrome Mox, I can go like, bridge this turn, Chrome Mox next turn, paying 3 mana, imprinting Fiery Confluence, play my own Rabble Master, that I get, alright. The mirror is not what we wanted to see when keeping a risky turn one Trinisphere hand.
that's actually very bad for me. So now I'm going to take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to take ten, go to one, and then I'm just dead. Rough. All right. So, Loon's come out, Chalice has come out, Trinisir has come out. I'd like to trim at least one bridge, preferably more, so I can get basically all of this stuff. The Chaos Warp's fine for Planeswalkers, the Abrades and the Spy Glasses are fine. And then I need to trim another card. I either trim a Magus or a Bridge. I'm going to be on the play, so I'll trim a Bridge. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Brightling Celebration Party Day. Alright, so what do I do? I go land... Chromox, Imprint, Confluence, nothing. No. Mulligan. So what do I do? Chromox, Imprint, Confluence, Play Tomb, Moon Man into Scab Clan Berserker, that's fine. Uh, Rabble Master is gas. So this is kind of nice because I got a use out of my soul lands and my opponent does not get a use out of their soul lands. I'm mostly hoping that my opponent doesn't produce a creature this turn because I have a hyper aggressive draw. And I'm actually going to opt to play Scab Clan Berserker here over the Rabble Master, just so I can get this trigger active. Alright, so how important are Ley Lines in the Reanimator matchup, or are Chalices slash Spheres often good enough? So... It depends on what you want to hedge against. My deck is hedging more against D&T and Miracles than Reanimator. Um, against Reanimator, you can a lot of times... Ooh, P&K is pretty good. Uh, you can a lot of times steal some wins, but it's much safer if you have uh, the Ley Lines or Fairies. I don't think my opponent will be willing to trade P and K for Scab Clan Berserker. My opponent might be willing to trade both Thopters for Magus, but in their turn they could trade a Thopter for Magus. I think I'm going to offer the trade of Magus for both Thopters. Because if my opponent loses both the Thopters, I'm way more willing to play out this Rabble Master. Neat.
What does this mean about my opponent's hand if they don't want to trade? I don't think they have confluence, or they would have just like confluenced my my board last turn. Uh, Mio, let me answer that in a second. That's a it's a bit of a deep question. I'll answer it after this match uh, because there are a couple changes that are going to happen with the Brightling lists. I'm going to play out this Rabble Master and like kind of force my opponent to like use their mana to get rid of it. This Scab Clan Berserker just sitting on the table is probably a good amount of pressure. And yeah, we're, we're getting really close to that Nick Bit stream, which is exciting. Okay, I guess my opponent's going to do some thinking here. So to talk about Brightling... Uh, I'm probably slotting two Brightlings into the 75 and one of the new, uh, like, Tormod's Crypt Clerics. Uh, so I think, like, those are changes that probably go together. Ooh, a bridge. So the bridge is kind of good. But this Berserker is still problematic. For them, that is. I'm more or less fine with whatever blocks they want to make. Like any 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 damage that goes through is ideal. Because like even one point of damage going through means that uh all of a sudden the Scab Clan Berserker triggers kill my opponent more quickly. Interesting blocks. <clears throat> I'm gonna play a redundant Magus. I'm gonna save the Sulfur Elemental as a surprise for later. Um, so as a little more follow up to Brightling. In in playing Brightling, it may change like the Stoneforge Mystic package a little bit and how exactly I want to go about approaching that. So that's that's something I'm going to need to think about. Like, does Brightling in the deck mean that I want more swords or something like that? That's that's the sort of thing that I want to to consider. So, like, I would consider a Sword of Feast and Famine, or, uh, like, just to maximize Brightling's potential. Uh, it's kind of a shame that, like, Sword of Feast and Famine doesn't push through both True Name and Strix, but it gets one of the two. Oh, Bri Brightling is nuts. Like, absolutely a vital part of the deck moving forward. Absolutely unquestionably. Uh, 
the the card tested very well for me at SCG Con. Uh, and every everyone who has actually been playing the card is very, very happy with it. Do I want to play this card? Not yet. I don't really have a good reason to. Like, if I draw my own bridge next turn, I can just, like, play my bridge. Like, the, the only thing that's annoying is these softers, and I still have, like, plenty of time versus them. There's a braid going on. Braid's going on Chrome Mox. Interesting. I would have braided Scab Clan Berserker personally. But I get that. And just to like further address like Brightling in the mirror, it does a lot of really weird things in the mirror that aren't immediately apparent. A lot of the weird things you can do with like blocking and bouncing are like hyper relevant to like the nature of the mirror. Karn. Uh, I get a Rabble Master, that's not the best. My opponent probably needs to ignore the Karn and just go for my life total, n knowing that it can go poorly, though. Although I kind of suspect that I'm dead this turn, I think I'm just going to get hit with two Thopters and then fire a Confluence for six. My opponent's been holding some card for a while. And Confluence kind of makes sense to me. Oh, their own card. <coughs> Uh, making a construct does not make a lot of sense to me. Like, the game the game is, like, over within a turn or two, one direction or the other. And I have, like, infinite chump blockers. So, and it also can't attack due to bridge. gonna like try to dig for like a Chandra, a Confluence, not that. So if I play this Rabble Master, I have two goblins that have to attack. That doesn't seem good. I can play it post combat though. I play it post combat next turn I can minus Karn, get the other Rabble Master, have 
presumably three goblins that can attack. No, that's not good enough. I do probably need to play out both of these cards. Uh, I'll play out Rabble Master post combat. I probably need to play p both of these cards out this turn, though, so that, like, I can play a bridge if necessary. Because my life total is precariously low. And my opponent can't beat me with a Fiery Confluence or a Chandra, so I just have to beat the board. Alright. On the draw, I probably want one more bridge in, one Rebel Mass, or, sorry, one Magus out. Yeah, basic plans. My opponent is not dead there. Like, they're, they're very much behind. Oh, hold on. That might have been, I have two non-creature spells in my hand, and all of your two power things can then attack in. That, that must have be, been what the concession was. Uh, any chances we'll be seeing Maverick or D&T? Yes. Uh, you will see a lot of D&T beginning again next week. Um, I think today I'll probably stream with Red Prison. Sunday I'll probably stream with Reanimator. Um, I want to do some quick streams because, like, I'm just trying to, like, fill things in during Latin Academy time. Um, but there are a lot of those things coming. Uh, since I don't have a Karn yet, I'm just gonna, like, lead on Mountain. Just on the off chance that my opponent wants to, like, abrade a Great Furnace. Punished by drawing the Karn, but whatever. Yep, that's real good. Okay. <coughs> I don't know if I would have used a card to go and get rid of the Rabble Master. Like, the Chandra Minus and get rid of it is still pretty good. And then they have an abrade for, say, a construct token. Here I'm like super punished for not playing uh, my Great Furnace on turn one, because this could be a 3 3. Well, not super punished, like, it still trades with the Rabble Master, which is what I care about. Okay. That was a great draw for my opponent. Super, super aggressive. Yeah, I mean, being on the draw there was really rough. Like, if I'm on the play and I drop my Rebel Master first, 
uh, and like then I drop Karn, and then I drop second Karn, um, I probably like get to out aggro my opponent pretty easily. And that happens sometimes in the mirror. But like the mirror is super awkward because not very many of your cards matter. <laughs> Like, in the mirror, you essentially care about everything in the 4-drop column, and Scab Clan Berserker, a Braid, and Spyglass, and then most of the rest of your deck doesn't matter. Like, yeah, Rabble Master can be okay, but the board often gets stalled and it can't do anything. Yeah, Bridge can be good because, you know, it's Bridge, but sometimes they, like, oh, you go Bridge and they go Chandra, and you go, well, that was bad. So there's just, there's just a lot of fluff. Like, if you could in this matchup, you would probably consider sideboarding out, like, 20 cards. <coughs> uh, how is this hand? I'm on the draw, I can turn to moon, but then my hand doesn't do anything, unless I draw another land, or I can turn to rabble master, turn three moon. This hand's kind of medium, my opponent is either delver or miracles based on past, or sorry, yeah, delver or miracles based on past results. Like, this is good against delver. These are all kind of good against Miracles. This is probably a, like, hesitant keep. The hand's a little soft. What do I want to throw into this? The opponent has like Lightning Bolt, Spell Pierce, Daze, Force as cards that could interact with one of these two. The Rabble Master isn't the best in the face of Deathrite Shaman because the token will just eat it. I could also do something a little bit weird and play a Mountain this turn. So that next turn I won't put a land into the graveyard for Deathrite Shaman. But I think I jam. Force pitch snapcaster, so we're probably playing against pile. Definitely playing against Pyle, now that we see the basic swamp. Fuck me! Him take both Chandras? That is rough.
All right. So e either way, whatever I played last turn was was dealt with. All right. Power of Moon has been dampened. This is probably going long enough where I don't need the city. So essentially we're in top deck mode and I just need my top deck to be better than theirs. That qualifies. So I think I'm just going to like drop Karn this turn, plus likely get a land, and then next turn Fiery Confluence away both of those death rights. Moon and Spear. Tasty. And my opponent gives me the Spear over the Moon. That's sort of interesting to me. Unfortunately, that does mean, like, not having any mana source available from the card there does mean that if I brick on lands of any nature, I could have some trouble. <coughs> oh man, give me a mana. That'll, that'll do. I get the three for one. Yes, three for ones are better than two for ones. That is that is how math works. So let's cast this two damage to each creature or two damage to each opponent. All right, the Trinosphere is gone. Lol. So Ch Chandra into Moon is fine, um, but I kind of just wanted to like find a confluence and pressure the life total. That's that's what I was digging for there. Is like a confluence or a rabble master that could just like clock really hard on the open board. Since my opponent already has like swamp and island, I don't know how much power the moon really has. Alright. So I usually go 
bridge out for spyglass in confluence in chaos warp in I think and I always waffle on these scab clan berserkers but usually leave them in the board Uh, so this hand doesn't have any lock pieces, but it's pretty aggressive. This is a three turn clock if I go like Rabble Master into Rabble Master. But it, it, it does have like effectively five lands. And this Chrome Box is a dead card, unless I draw a red card turn one that's not particularly good. This maybe should go back. Like a hand that has like an early moon or chalice or trinisker will just be stronger than this. Hmm. I'm thinking about this for a second, but I think it's going back. Like, just random, like, lightning bolts, K-commands, pushes, just make this hand do nothing. So I think I'm all again. This hand is much better. Alright, so what does this hand do? This hand goes, Chromox, Imprint, Rabble Master, Moon, Prey. So that goes to the bottom. <coughs> So this is essentially a force of will test hand. I I know, man. I needed I needed a chalice. That was the mistake. Didn't play turn one chalice. I would love to draw a non-critical red card. All right, the moon resolved. Let's see if they like naturally have the swamp too to just like totally mize me. That's a great draw. It'll probably get hemmed. Oh no, I can't get really get hemmed. It's safe. For now. I'm a hundred percent going to chaos warp away that island at some point. I'm not going to Karn minus, I'm just going to Karn plus. Like if I just like minus and this gets lightning bolted, that's so feel bad. It might be getting double lightning bolted though. Although if I were my opponent, I would probably wait until after Karn's ability resolved to do that, but whatever. Pile usually does not play Hydroblast. It's not like unprecedented by any means, but 
it's not common. So do I just go like balls to the walls and hydroblast that island like right the fuck now? It's probably greedy. Uh, static ripped. I'm currently three and one, and I'm up a game and pretty favored in this one. So the thing is that this island isn't particularly doing much right now. Like even if my opponent like just like plays a Snapcaster Mage in and just like trades for the Magus, I don't even care about that. Like there's some there's some fear that I give them something relevant with the the chaos warp and I just like chaos warp them into a Jace. On the off chance that they do have hydroblast, I'm gonna play out a second moon just so that like absolutely never will my opponent have access to like the ability to fetch or swamp or something like that. And my opponent just concedes. Alright, got the 4 1. Chaos Warp myself for the Chandra. That's. That is a strong line. I like that. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure whether or not it's, like, correct to Chaos Warp my opponent. Because if, if they've, like, stopped cantripping, then their hand is just full of duds. And if I, like, Chaos Warp them into a Leovold, it halts my offense. If I Chaos Warp them into a Jace, I'm, like, mega boned. If I, like, I think once I had a little bit more pressure, like, if that Karn would have lived, I probably would have Chaos Warped the island during their either, like, upkeep or end step. All right, what does my hand do? My hand produces turn one Blood Moon, so I will keep my hand. Turn one Blood Moon is pretty good on the play. And my opponent is F6, so it's just happening. All right, so we win game one. <clears throat> so I know my opponent's deck is bad against Blood Moon. What does that tell me? Not a lot. Probably not Miracles. Probably not d, &D. I'd probably just run back the same list. Man, this, this deck is definitely a little bit obnoxious. Like, having been on both sides of the table from it quite a bit, uh, there's a large number of non-games. Sort of like you just played Red Show and Tell. 
and your opponent dies. But you don't need a second card to put in. Nah, transfer is still like stupid good, even on the draw. Like, I went from playing two to three Trenosphere just because of, like, how good that card is. Well, this hand is, like, great against pretty much everything. So we'll, we'll keep this hand. Got hate for all sorts of different kinds of decks. Chromox. I will cast that. I'm going to imprint... This here, Rabble Master. And then we're going to slam the Transpear. I don't know what my opponent is doing, but Transpear is good against everything, so we play this. Oh, neat! It just happened. Alright, so we're probably playing against Delver. My opponent believes that my Trinosphere will lock me. That's where they're wrong, because I draw like a master. And I can't force this or anything, so this just resolves. So now they need a Lightning Bolt before they can do anything, probably, unless they have like a Young Pyromancer. We'll just get this out here now. Ah, yes, the three mana pitch a card, lose a life counter spell. Basically unplayable. Lol. Hey, they have a bolt for the Magus. But I have a bridge, so... Two cards in hand, so that's enough for the true name to not attack, so I don't need to like play city, play second chrome box just to empty my hand here. Uh braid the bridge. That's fine. I still have a lot of time. Alright, I have a Chalice on one, and a Trennis here. Just need to beat a true name. A bridge will do that, 
any any card that is a realistic clock, like Rabble Master, we'll do that. Yeah, we're we're up a game. Uh, I I resolved to turn one Blood Moon, and my opponent conceded last last game. I don't know if my opponent realizes how fast my clock is. So let's see. I can just go on the like attack with goblins for five turns plans. Or I guess three turns, right? Like I, I make another goblin this turn. I hit with both goblins. Yeah. So I don't need to attack with Rob Master here. So this hits for two. I believe that force of will just means my opponent's dead. Because the next turn they block Rabble Master, but I have three goblins. So they need to hit a young Pyromancer this turn as a blocker, or a non-CMC1 spell, or they die. Easy. How many followers to make you play Dragon Stompy with actual dragons? Uh, well, I've set follower goals for, like, the next thousand followers I'm going to get, so none. Uh, but I would ha be happy to play actual Dragon Stompy as a donation deck list. And all the details for that are below the stream. And I think I made a donation command. I did. Good job past me doing work so future me didn't have to. I just don't think, like, the dragons are the best finishers for the deck. I think the the Planeswalkers and things like P and K uh, largely are going to do a better job of finishing than the things like Rakdos Pit Dragon. But there are a couple of, like, sweet dragon, like, actual dragon stompy builds running around that run some weird cards. Uh, I think it's Avaricious Dragon is is one that <laughs> that I saw on lists with. <laughs> They're not the best finisher, but you get to call yourself Khaleesi for a stream. There, there is value in that. Yes. What does my hand do? My hand goes turn two Blood Moon fast enough. I've got a good mix of cards for different types of matchups. So like this hand's fine. It's no chalice on one. Which I would have loved for miracles, but so be it. All the slow trips. I 
gonna try to slam a moon before my opponent gets like both second island and planes. Oh wow, it just happened. That's awesome. Oh wow. Let's take the high upside play. Karn, Karn kills pretty darn quickly if you just go, like, Karn minus, Karn minus. I've really liked that for the combo matchups. Yeah, opponent's hand must have been, like, pretty awkward, and they were hoping that the pair of portents could have, like, strung it together. Uh, but they did not succeed in, uh, in doing so. Alright, so I'll go Bridges out and Magus out as my starting point. Berserker's pretty great. Spyglass is pretty great. Chaos Warp for Jace. And I, oh no, I need the Sulfur Elementals too. I guess that means some of these are coming out. Oh, interesting. Zach only boards one spyglass here. I think spyglass on Jace is really important. I'd like to have one more fire confluence in the deck, though. Maybe this is fine. Just con Confluence closing games is super good. I guess I can trim a Mox. Keep. Turn one, chalice on one, turn two, Karn. Deal. And opponent has the courtesy to play a non-basic land in case I Blood Moon. What a pal. Force pitch a Jace. I accept.
Ooh, I like seeing the second brainstorm. Third brainstorm of the game already burned on turn two. Force pitching the fourth brainstorm. Okay. New plan. So I think my opponent has a source of plowshares since I fetched planes over island. Ooh, a disenchant. Okay. Never mind, I take it back. Bye, Karn. I'm not willing to play out another threat here. I have plenty of pressure. I'm basically only worried about like Terminus and Supreme Verdict. Hey, that easy. All right, folks, I'm going to take 30 seconds and run to the restroom, and then we'll go into round three of this league. We're currently 2-0. All right, good morning, everyone. My name's Phil Gallagher. I'm with Thraven University, a legacy site exclusively for death and taxes. Today, we are streaming Red Prison while we wait for Brightling to come to Magic Online. And we're getting there. We're just a week away from, like, real good, solid D&T gameplay again. If you enjoy good legacy content, feel free to follow this channel. And if you really enjoy what I'm doing and want to support me, consider donating or, uh, you know, submitting a donation deck list or subscribing to my channel. 
So we went on a pretty good tear with this deck. We just got a 4-1 in the league, and we're currently 2-0 in our next league here. Uh, Red Prison just gets a lot of relatively easy wins with all of its lock pieces. Um, some of your games are just outside of your control, um, but that's the case with most legacy decks uh, that aren't running cantrips. Uh, but the raw power of this deck is just stellar. So I'm currently streaming from Randolph-Macon College. I'll be here for the next like two and a half weeks teaching spoken Latin for Virginia Governor's Latin Academy. Uh, it's a pretty neat program. I'm having a lot of fun. The kids are starting to gear up for a spoken Latin marketplace activity where over the next about two weeks they go and they make a whole bunch of like pseudo-authentic uh, products that they will then go and barter and sell and trade in their marketplace. It's going to be a lot of fun, both for me and the kids. Looks like my opponent has played Bug Delver and Allurin recently. <clears throat> Player draw, very difficult decision. Uh, come on. At least give me my opening hand so I can talk about that. This hand is exceptionally slow, and I'm on the draw. That's a bad combo, so uh, this is this is a mulligan. I, I need some degree of speed to make this hand good. Turn two Trinisphere is fine, uh, but this hand is not exciting. Ah! The joke is on you, opponent. It's not very good against me. Is not the mirror. It is Eldrazi. So 
So I think I'm willing to like actually just sacrifice a city of traders next turn when I play this Chandra. So that I don't take four damage from ancient tombs. Because so I have I have plenty of land. Unfortunately, Trinosphere is not the the best against Eldrazi. Bridge is stellar. And my opponent doesn't currently have Thought Knots here, so that bodes very well for me. We'll just get that off the board. Um, it's not a particularly powerful card, but if my opponent played something like Endbringer and then got to... Oh, wow. Opponent just has bricks over there. So this is cool. This bridge is just going to win this game. Or this bridge will. Um, actually, they can't answer the first bridge anyway. So I'll just say no to that and just get this bridge out of my hand. I'm okay with taking the damage to do so. I'm a little confused about what's in my opponent's hand. Uh, so... At everyone asking about it, I'm guessing my opponent's hand contains a bunch of weird, huge crap. Like, Big Eldrazi, uh... All is dust, things of that nature. That's like the only thing I can comprehend them having right now. Yeah, this is this is game one. Either that or my opponent has given up winning this game. Completely and is just trying to not show me cards. I will just pitch the spirit guide here. This can go. I guess I don't really want that. I'm just trying to get hell bent, Andrew. Or I drew. What do I care about? I don't care about Thought Knots here. I don't care about Eldrazi Mimic. I basically only care about a big Olamog that can get rid of Bridge. 
And uh, like if I can get a Blood Moon effect, I can stop that too. So I guess I should shut off Warping Whale as it's like a mana source, and I can also shut off Grim Monolith if they're on that build. So we'll cast this for two. Uh, if I could waste one of his eyes, like his lands, it's absolutely Ivugan. That's the only one of these that like does anything at all, possibly. Okay, hold on. All right, so they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they can I tutor a big idiot. And then they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Alright, and they can cast a big idiot. So keeping that in mind, I should probably just, like, Fiery Confluence, dome them, hit them to 8. Karn minus, create a big, big. I'll go to 12 if I tap both Ancient Tombs, but that's fine. Alright, so... 6 damage to each opponent is fine. I think this is better than, like, Karn plus Hope to hit a moon. Because, like, now if my opponent gets rid of the bridge with an Olamog cast trigger, then there is a very real fear that I will just kill them with this construct if they ever swing out. They are also at 6, so a Fiery Confluence will kill them, or 3 turns of Chandra will kill them. Oh, jeez. Do they not have access to Olamog in game one? Is it, or maybe it's in their hand. If it was in their hand, couldn't they have just cast it last turn? Yeah. We wait. So there's an Endbringer. What else you got? So this one's not in the sideboarding notes, so let's just figure out what I want to do. What's bad? Chalice is very bad. Trinisphere is very bad. Those absolutely need to not be in the deck. So braids, removal for small things, and annoying artifacts.
I guess Confluence is a sweeper and can blow up annoying artifacts. Chaos Warp can deal with big things that I otherwise can't answer. Like, I'm entirely damage based removal, so I'm very reliant on this bridge to lock out the bigger threats like Reality Smasher, Endbringer, and so forth. Should probably play Spyglass to stop Iavugan specifically, because the game goes very, very, very long. Although it can stop other things like Endbringer or Walking Ballista. K Return isn't awesome. You can just like bring in a Miser Scab Clan Berserker. And this is probably fine. I'm not well prepared like to sideboard for this matchup because my main deck is so well suited to fighting it. <sighs> Excuse me. Turn one Blood Moon or Bridge. Deal. I'd love to draw Soul Land. Alright, I've mooned them, I've shut off their best cards. Now I just need to beat all their mediocre cards. I think they'll bring in Thorns. I don't know. Thorns, okay. It's not amazing. A walking ballista for one. Okay. Like, as far as Thorn goes, it's really a question of, like, how many bad cards do they have to take out? Um... Do I have an Eldrazi list up here still? Like, my opponent probably needs to take out, like... Dismember and Chalice... And they probably bring it, like, if it's anything like this, they probably bring in, like, Karn, Karn, Spyglass, Spyglass, Ratchet Bomb, All is Dust. And I don't know that you also want to bring in Thorns. Alright, do I want to play the second Rabble Master? If I play the second Rabble Master, Eldrazi Mimic will trade with a Rabble Master. And then my opponent can go land, walking ballista, kill the second Rabble Master. But I'll have three goblins remaining as pressure. And that's fine pressure in the face of like literal nothing. Otherwise I can attack him with just two goblins. 
and play bridge second main. In the grand scheme of things, I'm probably okay with my opponent trading both of their cards for both of my Ravel Masters, considering how far ahead I am. And I still have the clock afterwards. Three, three damage a turn is fine when... My opponent's best cards are all not viable cards to cast. What do you have for me, Mr. Bob Buttons? Okay, what could they have that would make them think for this long? Interesting. So now I just attack with four goblins. And I don't offer the trade here. I assume this means they have some big fatty they're going to play next turn, and they like want to push damage with Eldrazi Mimic, so this is where I just give them the bridge, and then my guys can attack, and his can't. Glorious. Bray is great. Is it worth just abrading the mimic? Probably not. On the off chance. Oh man, when my opponent goes to pump walking ballista, I can abrade it in response. That's gonna feel good. Yeah, this is a this is a pretty savage blowout. Uh, my opponent like got a little bit greedy and like trying to wait 
until my turn to do that. Okay, so let's see. What happens if I attack with the Rabbit Master? Rabbit Master trades with Mimic. My opponent will take four. They'll take four, then three, then two. But another endless one would mess me up. So I can just keep attacking with the Goblin Tokens. And once my opponent, like, begrudgingly trades a Mimic for a Goblin token, then I can attack him with a Rabble Master. I'm fine with trading that for an Endless one. Lucifer 2 is pretty good. That can kill the Rabble Master. Or not. So now I can just attack all out. My opponent can trade Mimic for Rabble Master. Block, block, ping, ping, take zero, and then die to Chandra Plus on the next turn. Or I can just attack with five goblins, and they can go block, 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 double ping, rabble master. I'm just going to attack with the five goblins and see what my opponent does. This, this one's locked up either way. So I think my opponent goes ping rival master, ping rival master here. Nope. So they don't go ping rival master here, ping rival master here. They can't do it on my turn still. Because, like, once they remove one counter from the list, it'll just die to state based effects of. Yep, okay. Well. Yeah, so, like, here's the Eldrazi list that I played last time I played Eldrazi. Like, so when when a moon drops, sorry, let me just do some shifting here. When a moon drops, these 14 cards, these 15 cards get shut off, and presumably the other Warping Whale is in as well. So, a huge portion of your deck goes down the drain. Uh, like, this is going to get boarded out, this is going to get boarded out, and, like, some number of the colored stuff probably will as well. And so, like, a Warping Whale, a Ratchet Bomb, two Spyglasses, Karn, all is dust. So, like, seven cards come in, these five come out, and then maybe two trims of some nature. Uh, like, maybe... Maybe like matter reshapers, but uh, it's it's not a matchup that's gonna feel good. All right, currently three zero. Haven't dropped a game this stream yet. Or wait, no, we dropped we dropped one in the previous league. So I'm I'm four and one for the day. Oh, excuse me.
All right, so I have lunch at noon, so I should be able to get through two more games by about 11.45. This, this is kind of why I'm playing, like, decks that move quickly right now, because on, on like, these weekday mornings when I have time to stream, it's only because the Greek teachers are teaching. <laughs> so I have the, these small chunks of time where I can stream. Doing, doing my best to keep the content up, even though I'm, like, crazy busy. Uh, I've gotten, like, so much support from the community for what I'm doing that it's worth the hecticness. Uh, opponent last played Reanimator. So I can go turn one bridge or moon. That's fine. I think I'm gonna go turn one moon, turn two bridge, in case I can actually like take my opponent off of black. That does matter. Be a little sad if my opponent just like has swamp and duresses me or unmasks me, but otherwise, this is pretty optimal sequencing because it like both empties my hand and uh, mucks with my opponent. It's also somewhat. It's also not unlikely that they might just discard for their turn to put a fatty in the graveyard. Hey, Arkin. I keep getting notifications that you're streaming, but I haven't been able to watch uh, due to my, my Latin Academy job. Oh yeah, I'm I'm super excited for Brightling time. Like, I I can't wait. I'm very excited. That card is awesome. It's super fun to play with. It makes for good content. Uh, there's interesting and difficult lines associated with it. Yeah, Potentia, that's kind of what it's like. It's like, oh, I have free time for a minute. Uh, Moto. Yeah, uh, every time that I'm going to have, like, a two to three hour chunk, I'm going to try to stream. Uh, so towards, towards the end of the stream, I'll grab my schedule and see when the next one can be. I think it'll probably be Sunday, uh, but I'll let you know. So, what don't I want? I know it won me that game, but Moon is pretty darn bad on the draw, especially. So I don't want those. And that's probably all. My, my game plan is essentially like, let's try to win with Bridge, otherwise let's try to get aggro with Rabble Master, Scab Clan, backed up by, like, some hate piece like Chalice or Trinosphere. Moon Man's fine because it's still a body, it still does damage. Uh, I guess I could Chaos Warp. Chaos Warp on a fatty's good. Well, let's bring that in. Or I'm kind of torn on this last card.
what does this hand do? So this hand goes Promox, Imprint, Confluence, Land, Spirit Guide, Cast, Berserker, Turn 1. Is that a good enough hand? Berserker is really good against Grizzlebrand Vomit. So I'm going to keep this. I will be soft to an Unmask. But I think this is a fine hand on the draw. If my opponent doesn't go off turn one, then or like doesn't discard spell me. Ooh. Opponent's not reanimator. But that's okay. This seems good. I was gonna say this seems good, but this seems better. So my opponent is like either going to be like Delver or maybe some sort of like young Pyromancer control deck is my guess. Yes. Well, that worked out very well for me. My opponent doesn't have Daze or Force here. I think I just take over this game. A Lightning Bolt would be good. There we go. Yeah, so I'm 3-0. I'm, I'm up a game against Delver, although I've boarded for Reanimator. But it's fine. Uh, do I want to send this upstairs? I don't think I do. The easiest way for me to win is just my opponent playing a threat that I don't answer. I'm not going to play the Confluence yet. Trinosphere is super important. So I can play the Trinosphere this turn. My opponent can, like use their death right shaman to make a play on their turn if they want. And then I can hopefully like confluence the death right shaman and one other card. That would be ideal. I'm fine with playing this out. This this is currently better than my opponent's board, so We'll make them answer this, and then I'll go from there. My 
My opponent's resource light and their cantrips are pretty bad right now. Alright, so I got a lightning bolt out of the deal. Let's see if this resolves. Can't be dazed. Can be forced or spell pierce. Nope. And I'm not going to kill the Jethric Shaman with this, because I'm hoping to use the Fiery Confluence for that. So I'm just going to take my damage here. Perfect. No, I will not cast that Karn. That Karn is super tempting, but this is a moment where I can just fiery confluence, get the board, and then Chandra will be victorious. Easy. We even sideboarded wrong and we still get there. 4 0. Alright, I'm going to refill my water and then we'll go into the fifth round of this league. Yeah, we were we were two zero in every match of this league. Uh, this this league has felt very very good. Um, I mean, just more generally, Red Red Prison is just like unquestionably one of the best decks in the format right now. It it gets a ton of free wins. It's objectively powerful. It's it's fighting at good angles for a lot of the rest of the tier one meta game. Um, it's very good. And this is probably one of the best ways to attack the format until Deathrite Shaman gets itself banned. Like, this is this is very good against the, the Merit Lodge decks, it's good against Pile, it's good against Delver, um, and it, like, randomly hoses a lot of other decks too, right? Like, Eldrazi has trouble with it, uh, like, due to the Blood Moons and the Bridges, uh... Decks like Storm can randomly get hosed by the lock pieces in game one, and even more so in the post-sideboard games. Um, it, it is just very good right now, which is really unusual because historically prison decks have not been good in Legacy. Uh, this is the first time that prison has like been a tier one strategy and just like one of the best things you can be doing, probably in the entire time that I've been playing Legacy.
You've never felt unfavored playing pile against the red prison decks. Interesting. Let me see if I can support my claim with data then. I haven't been collecting data with Red Prison recently just because I've been lazy. But I should have enough to say something. I don't have a large sample size, so I don't want to say anything, but my, my, my results show that I'm favored, but not, like, with a sample size less than 10, it's not, like, super indicative of anything, actually. So my opponent last played Loam in February. My opponent is playing Loam, then a Blood Moon hand is good. I'm going to keep this hand. It's not as explosive as I want it to be, but if my opponent isn't actually playing Loam, then this sequence of like turn 2 Chalice for 1 into turn 3 Blood Moon into double Rapple Master is pretty nuts. And like... Results that are like four or five months old, that's a little questionable. Yeah. Super rewarded for keeping. So I can moon now. Or I can chalice now. It really, like, which one's better really depends on what deck my opponent is playing. If my opponent is playing Miracles and I like Blood Moon, it resolves, and I get to take them off of mana, that's like a color that's super strong. My opponent is playing a combo deck, and it's probably better to play Chalice. Regardless of what I do, I can't do two spells next turn. This is interesting. My thought is Chalice. What does chat think? I'm gonna I'm gonna let let chat answer because like I think this is an interesting spot, right? So if my opponent is like miracles or pile, then letting them fetch is bad because they can like get access to their second color for the rest of the game. But if there's some generic combo deck, then Chalice is way, way better. I don't think Rabble Master is actually in the conversation. Because, like, establishing a lock first and then playing your threat is just, like, objectively better. Alright, chat, chat is, is convinced that Chalice is the play. I am in agreement. Well, I, I actually promote thinking on my channel. Like, I, I ask questions that are pointed and specific. And if I think someone's full of crap when they say something, I ask them to defend their answer or, or explain why they think that. So this is fetch for swamp, then we're playing pile, and, like, objectively playing moon would have been better. Well, we're gonna, like, aggro the fuck out of my opponent and kind of ignore that Strix. 
If my opponent naturally has the Swamp in hand and they're just sandbagging it, I probably want to Moon this turn, and then every turn for the rest of the game I will just like play a Rapple Master until they like succumb to death. Yes, I am teaching spoken Latin for Virginia's Governor's Latin Academy. So that's my, my, why my stream times have been like so sporadic recently. It's because we're on an A day B day system where the A days are Latin classes in the mornings and the B days are Greek classes in the morning. So it's currently a Greek day, which is why I have off. Okay, Sandbag Swamp confirmed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now I get a free, free one damage in with Rapple Master number one. Actually, I'm taking my sweet time here. So now, like, 1k command isn't going to wiggle out of this lock. And we can start raveling later. I don't hate the draw of, like, a backup Trinisphere. Oh, yeah, this feels good. I love the Force of Will... Oh, Pitch Jace. Deal. I love the Force of Will, pay three mana, lose a life. Like, pitch a card. I love, I love that interaction so much. The, the opponent needs to find a happy place, yes. A K command is a good start. But it's not enough. A K command can kill Rabble Master and get rid of one of Chalice or Trinisphere. Probably get rid of the Chalice. But then the, the Trinisphere still, like, really fucks with the potency of, like, cantrips and such. Red Bitter Blossom. I like that. Deluge, maybe? A Deathrite Shaman. Deathrite Shaman's pretty annoying. Because that means something like a Jace can come down.
And it also just has two toughness, so it can eat a token every turn. So that'll just force me to play this little monkey here as an additional clock. Uh, of note, there is only a single land in the graveyard, and there won't be any more put there this game in all likelihood unless Search for his Kanta mills them. Like so. So now, De Deathrite gets two activations this game now that this is flipped, unless there's another Search somewhere. What does that attack mean? That attack's interesting. So that probably means Snapcaster Mage, right? Because otherwise you just hold that back. So it could be like Snapcaster Mage K Command. Snapcaster Mage K Command. Yep, okay, so there's six mana to do that. Yeah, I don't know what exactly is going on with the flip search. So I guess technically I should have like cast my Trinisphere pre-combat. No, I guess it doesn't matter, right? Because my opponent can go, go like, still go like Snapcaster Mage, Call Against Command, Call Against Command, Target Trinisphere. Yeah, okay, so that doesn't matter. Uh huh. And, and, and BFG, what 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 exactly would you uh, want want to be hiding? Like we're we're red prison. The deck lists are very stock.
is this? Oh, that sorry, the red was just for Trinus here, I see. Since I really don't want to imprint anything anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and cast one of these, get one of these out of my hand for like Karn types of reasons. I don't have a PNK. Like it's it's not like one way or another it's not going to take very long. I have no information to hide. I I in fact probably have information to gain. And if I end up with something like double planeswalker on top or something like that or double threat on top, like I can crawl back into this. It's hard due to like the planeswalker redirection rule change. Um, uh, don't really want to play that. Again, I'll cast this, get this out of my hand. Oh yeah, I, I like by no stretch of the imagination do I expect to win this game. Yep, see, this this is the sort of thing that we needed to get back in. Uh, so we'll see if opponent has a counterspell. If they have a counterspell, that's rough. Ooh, they don't. Okay. What does my opponent do with their Strix? Keep Chandra in check. So Chandra's not going to get to ultimate. That might be okay. We'll see. Like, Chandra needs to hit some goodies here. I maybe should have considered, like, keeping that land in hand to get more turns with Chandra. But I'm not racing in that way anyway. Just a K command. A K command, like just doing two to my face, discarding a card, is rough. Or a K command, just like do teal two to me, get Snapcaster back, get K command back. That just leaves me dead. Uh. 
Um, so the bridge is only preventing Chandra from taking one damage. And this Jace is going to ultimate on the following turn, and I can't really do anything about that. So I think not playing the bridge and keeping a card in hand is probably better. I shouldn't have played my land at, at that as well. But I kind of just expect that I'm going to die to like just actual damage before I die to the Jace. So if I play if I play the bridge, it doesn't prevent that because they just like K command get snapcaster back, bolt, snap, bolt, or like K command, snap, K command. So we were pretty dead a whole bunch of different ways there. All right, so versus pile, go bridge out, go confluence out, we'll go spyglass and chaos warp in, and I think that's it. It's versus miracles that I pulled the chrome box. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, Cheesehead, uh, they definitely could have, like, Bolt, Snap, Bolt, or K-Command, Snap, K-Command over the course of one to two turns. Uh, I will be keeping this. I'm not sure what I'm doing with it yet. I think this is just, like, lead on turn one Chalice, and then maybe lead on turn two Chalice on two. Kind of depends on whether or not this gets forced and what my opponent fetches, if anything, on their next turn. Well, that just makes me want a Karn. But I should probably just Magus. Like, I can Magus and let them fetch one of their two basics. That seems preferable to giving them both. So that'll lead a force. So if that got forced, but my chalice didn't, that might be indicative of a K command. I got 4-4 four, four right now, that's pretty good. If I do that and they have K-Command though, can K-Command destroy the Chalice, 2 to Karn, attack Karn with Strix and Karn dies, I don't want that. So I'll just plus Karn. What's the other thing? A oh, fiery confluence. Solid.
Ooh, just just go at me. Interesting. Yeah, Karn's great here. Goblin Warchief, Karn is just better than Hazaret, trust me. You would like to Chalice on 3, would you? I'm just going to Chalice on 2 to stop a potential flash in Snapcaster Mage or an Edict or a Baleful Strix. And then I'm going to make a big big. My opponent currently does not have red mana, so currently Strix attack into Lightning Bolt doesn't work for multiple different reasons. Well, now we're just, like, beyond hyper-aggressive. So now I have my opponent dead on board, or if my opponent, like, attacks Strix and then, like, land Toxic Deluges, they're just dead to the Fiery Confluence in my hand, or the second Fiery Confluence that's available with Karn. This hand probably doesn't do enough. It's really slow. My opponent can get both of their basics before these moons come down. Um, I don't have anything that actually kills them. I'm going to ship this one. Like This is a perfectly acceptable hand, but this might not be a winning hand, which is what I care about. Uh, with a red card, this is a turn one blood moon, turn two Karn. This hand is much better. So I'll go to the bottom. play these great furnaces out early uh, due to just Karn reasons. The construct that we make uh, should be very big. And I like that my opponent fetched Island. That means I'm not getting hymned. I don't have that many cards in my hand that I actually care about. So, like, a him gone wrong could be really disastrous for me. Probably, probably two-ish edicts in the 75. It, it is an ish, though. How do I want to approach this turn? Uh, Trinisphere is kind of a weird draw. Trinisphere is really good. 
but I can just, like, drop the card this turn. Which is probably better than anything else I can be doing. So probably, like, Karn, Imprint, Magus, Play, Ancient Tomb, Karn, Plus, and just plan on Karn plusing until they deal with that. And then I'll drop Trinisphere next turn to, like, really put the pressure on. If my opponent just plays something like a Leobold, then I can just make a large construct as a blocker. A Force of Will on this Karn would be very rough. Yeah, there, there's a real argument to Trenosphere as, like, the Force of Will check card. This is, like, the high-risk, high-reward play, whereas the Trenosphere, like, just play, like, Great Furnace. Trenosphere is the low-risk, low safer play. But if they don't have a Force, they might get ahead on board more. Yeah, so, so this Karn doesn't have, like, a traditional Planeswalker ultimate in the way that many of the others do. Uh, this one just has three usable abilities. Which is kind of neat, because that means that, like, since all of its modes are immediately usable and viable, it's more flexible than a lot of other Planeswalkers are. With a normal Planeswalker, you usually have, like, two choices a turn, but this one you have three. Oh wow, they have second island. That's a little surprising. Not, not like unprecedented or anything, but... One island is much more typical. Ooh, am I willing to cash in the Fiery Confluence yet? If I drop, if I cash in the fiery confluence as like effective two for one kind of, it's it's potentially stopping something like a Jace from hitting the board. But Trin, Trin, like Trinisphere first means that it would be less likely to get countered, and I just like want to get this card in play. It's so good. But there is some chance that my opponent could like fetch a bad lands or something and him and get the confluence. And then I'd be annoyed. But I'm gonna I'm gonna play my lock piece. Basically hoping to dodge a Jace this turn, and if I dodge a Jace, I feel like I'm in a great position. Hmm. Three mana ponder. Deal. Now I'm comfortable cashing in the Fiery Confluence. It can't be ca... Do I want to moon? My opponent's not going to have any more basics, so the moon doesn't matter that much. <coughs> it's just, like, fetching at this point. I guess that's fine, and like, there's some world where they play another Strix, or a Leo, or a Snapcaster, or something. 
If I don't get rid of the Deathrite Shaman, there's a possibility of double spell next turn. It's fine. Let's moon. It'll it'll like dampen the power of Deathrite Shaman because like they, they only have a single swamp. So just getting that out, out of the way. Oh man. Okay, never mind. So just like decreasing the power of this Deathrite Shaman over time is pretty good. Because my opponent is left with the choice of like, do I drain or do I cast some black spell? Okay, now they have the chase. Fiery Confluence nerf being felt. But I can get rid of the death right in the Strix, then my life total isn't under pressure. And I just have to draw something that can potentially be a Jace. So like Spyglass, Chaos War. A Karn, a Chandra, a Goblin Rabble Master, something something of that ilk would be great. So I want two damage to each creature, one set of two damage to each opponent. That just resolves. I don't need to play this land. I'm going to continue to hold my lands in case I draw Chandra to give myself extra turns to like race a Jace ultimate. So a card went to the bottom, so here's a chance to draw something that matters. Ho ho ho! Opponent has 5 mana for hardcast force of will, that's bad for me. Yeah, I mean, pr Predict is a more than one of in the new Miracles decks. Okay, so my opponent is going to get to plus to 13. I would need, I would need them to bottom something, and then I would need to draw Sorceress Spyglass here. That's, that's the out. Yeah, so, so JD, I'll have an another one at some point this week. And then we'll see where I'm at after that. I'll grab my schedule in just a second and figure that out. Alright, 4-1. Two 4-1s in a row there. Uh, let me grab my schedule and see what my next stream's going to be.
Okay, so today's Thursday, 28th. It's a field trip tomorrow, so that's going to throw off the scheduling. Okay, so I think my next stream is going to be Sunday morning after breakfast. So let me... I'll, I'll annotate that on the stream somewhere in just a minute. So on on Sundays, there's no no morning classes or anything like that. So I have a break before about noon. Uh, so maybe somewhere around like nine to noon in the same sort of time slot that I'm doing now, I'll do another stream. Uh, I think I want to mess around with some red, black reanimator. Um, I just... Kind of, like like I said, while while I'm like doing this whole Latin Academy thing, my time chunks are kind of smallish, so I want to play decks that you're, like that burn through leagues quickly rather than uh, like DNT, which takes a while. And like with DNT, some of your matches end up lasting like thirty or forty minutes pretty easily, and I get a lot less flexibility in uh, when I can stop due to that. Oh, and it's like five minutes till my lunch time, so I actually need to go. Uh, so thank you everyone for tuning in. My name's Phil Gallagher. If you enjoy legacy content, please follow. I'm looking to get uh, to my thousand followers mark there so that uh, I can go do an, a pair of Nick Fit streams, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. Um, and if you really enjoy my content, consider um, subscribing or doing a donation or some other thing to support my stream. Thank you very all for the support. Uh, I am currently in Eastern Time. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get to this, uh, this video uploaded, uploading to YouTube momentarily, uh, and I will hopefully see some of you again on Sunday. Goodbye!